This is an ADC warning. The crimes you're about to see are true. Only the names were changed to protect the ignorant. Tonight on America's Dumbest Criminals, you'll see a fool and his jewels, a crime that was not well done, and three lightweights with a heavy load. These are just a few of America's Dumbest Criminals. Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm Daniel Butler. We all know that Hollywood is famous for its portrayal of criminals as being cunning and powerful masterminds of crime, fearless in the face of danger and the law. Their criminals are known for their uncanny knack of adaptability and their skill of last-second escapes. Well, folks, as they say, this ain't Hollywood. This is the real world of America's dumbest criminals. Our first case was slightly open when it was closed from Foster Arnett in Knoxville, Tennessee. One of our patrol officers got a call of a burglary in progress. When he arrived on the scene, he did a cursory examination on the outside of the house, and then he made entry into the house, uh, searched the entire house, and when he got to the kitchen, there was a door that led into the garage, but it was locked from the garage side. So the officer went outside, walked around the front of the house, and saw that there was about, oh, probably a foot gap between the bottom of the garage door and the top of the driveway. And the officer got down on all fours with his flashlight. And as he got down to look in, the burglar was on the inside looking out. They both, both saw each other at the same time. And it scared both of them so badly that the burglar stood up, hit his head, and it knocked him out. And the officer was able to reach in and take him into custody. The only thing he got away with was a lump on his noggin. In Boston, it used to be against the law for nightclubs to have frog jumping contests. But it was legal to have frog-like line dancing. Sergeant Ernest Hurt of Birmingham, Alabama, was serving a warrant when he got a big surprise. And so one day, me and my couple of partners, we went out to this location out in the eastern part of town. And we got it knocked on the door. Hello, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Fine, sir. We need to know if a one Grace Reed is here. We have a felony warrant for her arrest. No, she isn't. Okay, so when was the last time that you saw Miss Reed? Oh, and I explained the law that uh, we would have to come in and search for her. So by that time, my partner was at the back, and we heard a big rumble, boom, just like thunder, something, the wall was falling in. So we thought they was going out the back door with my partner. We found out he hit this female and fell out the ceiling, almost broke her neck, hit sank and thing, about 280 or something pounds, foot stuck up in the air. And she looked up at me and she said, who are you? Well, who are you? I said, I'm the police, who are you? It wasn't funny, but then it was, you know, f hiding in the ceiling. So I said, what you doing up the ceiling? She said, I was like, up there cleaning up. I said, OK, then I told who he was and explained it to her. She was under arrest. She was fine. We're still checking the house. ADC quiz number 171. How many inmates in the U.S. were incarcerated per week in 1994? Was it A, 1,602, B, entirely too many, or C, 1,994? The correct answer is A, 1,602, which is entirely too many. However, by midweek, at least 800 are digging their first escape tunnel. This is actual surveillance cam footage of America's dumbest driver. It's just another quiet night in an open all-night convenience store. Notice the car backing into the telephone pole in the parking lot? Keep your eye on him. Our female clerk decides to take a break and doesn't realize a kamikaze shopper is headed her way. Uh-oh. Oh, no. He's got it in drive. Wait a minute. No, no, no. That's not a drive through window. No, not yet. Gee. <sighs> Gee, do you think this guy was drinking? Let's see that one more time. There's no drive through window in this convenience store, but there is now. Remember, folks, friends don't let friends drive through stores. 
Coming up, see a dumb criminal who falls asleep on the job on America's Dumbest Criminals. In our next story, we find that the only thing that makes a dumb criminal dumber is having a dumb partner. Here's sleeping on the job. One night we're working swing shift and we get a call to go out behind the uh, bank. There's a person laying behind the dumpster. So we go out there thinking that it's probably somebody that's, uh, you know, a vagrant asleep or something of this nature. We pull up in the parking lot and we park the car so that the headlights are on the dumpster and we put the spotlights on it and everything. And to our bewilderment, this head pops up from behind the dumpster wearing a ski mask and looking at us. And it's not winter time. And so we get out of the car with our guns drawn, tell them to get their hands up, you know, if there was more than one back there and come out. Turn around. So we do a little bit of interrogation of the kid after we give him the rights and everything, and he eventually tells us that his friend and he had worked for a rental car agency, and they knew that the rental car manager made the night drop every night at the back of this bank. And they had been fired, so they were going to get back at the rental car manager, and they were going to rob him. Well, the one kid dropped the other one off behind the bank. His biggest complaint his friend had was he'd been driving around waiting for the other kid to pull a robbery and was almost out of gas. Well, the rental car manager came in, made the night drop, and left. <laughs> and meanwhile, this kid's asleep, and the kid didn't wake up till we pulled up on the police car and saw him. So the trigger man fell asleep, and the getaway car ran out of gas, and neither one of the dumb criminals ever saw their intended victim. This was not a perfect crime. It turns out they didn't pull the robbery, they got caught, and they both got convicted. Conspiracy to commit robbery. In Indiana, once your breath leaves your body, it is no longer your property. Here we see a state guard inspecting the impounded breath of 65 winos. And now inside the courtroom for trial and error. A very professional international drug cartel was busted by one little old lady who lived near their warehouse. Because of your phone call, the police went to the warehouse and seized 22 tons of cocaine with a street value of more than $6 billion, the largest drug raid in U.S. history. What did the suspects do to give themselves away? Well, I was trying to get some sleep, and they wouldn't quit backing up. Uh, what do you mean, backing up? They wouldn't quit backing up the, the trucks and making that annoying beep, beep, beep sound. Oh. That's why you made the call. Well, who could sleep with all that noise, all that backing up and beep, beep, beep? Ah. Oh. In Ohio, it is against the law to tailgate. However, it's not against the law to leapfrog. Captain Annetta Nunn of Birmingham, Alabama, tells us about a case we called Fooled You. Working burglary unit, uh, wearing plain clothes, driving a plane car. Most criminals know they're police cars. Eh? This guy was right across the street from City Hall, getting ready to leave, go on a case or whatever. And I had walked to the door, thrown my purse in the car, and was about to get in it, and I heard somebody say, hey. You know, they were standing right up on me. He scared me. Still some rings out of Tennessee, I huh? sure did take a look at these. Oh, these some beauts, huh? Yeah, these are now, real these here, nice. Nine hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. He opened this little ring case, which you look at it, you know it's a little five dollar ring from the bargain store, and they've changed the price tags on it. He's got like nine hundred dollars on it. <laughs> I say, you stole these out of Tennessee? He say, yeah, but don't let the man see. Don't let the man see. I said, okay, and I held it up. He said, put it down, put it down. Don't let the man see. <laughs> I said, okay. So about this time, he he leans forward he sees the mobile radio in the floorboard of my car he says you the police i say yeah hey, i'm an innocent man no i think we need to go home. inside and talk about it come on you ain't got nothing on oh, me I, I don't know about that why don't you bring your jewelry back out let's just let's go talk about your jewelry back he said well i'm gonna go with you he said because i'm gonna show you just how big a fool you are there's nothing you can put me in jail for i said okay come on go with me so we're going across and i'm trying to think what can i charge this guy with this stuff is not real but when I get in, it's one of the older detectives inside. He asked me, say, what do you have? Well, it seems to me we have this ordinance that says you can't sell inside the business loop without a license. 
So I was sitting there writing up. He said, what are you doing? I said, you going to jail. He said, you can't put me in jail. I said, yes, I can. I said, don't ever call me a fool. And now, a case we call the mystery of the flushometer. This device is called a flushometer or flushometer. You see this in most public restrooms, but in New York City, you can see them disappear. Over 150 flushometers were stolen in one month. A flushometer retails for about $150, but only brings $4 when sold for scrap. One was even stolen from the mayor's restroom in City Hall. Once again, dumb crime flushes taxpayers' money down the drain. Coming up, a robbery that turns to rubble on America's dumbest criminals. The next crime may make some men squeamish because it's painfully dumb. We got a call uh, early Monday morning from one of the local businesses said that uh, suspicious circumstances, we think we've been burglarized and, and the, uh, the uh, burglar is still on the premises. So the officers responded as an in-progress call got there with the guns drawn, ready, and uh, he gets to inspecting, and we find out what the story is, is that uh, this was early Monday morning, Saturday night, around 11 o'clock or so, a fellow decided to break into the establishment going through the roof. And he found a vent up there, and he says, hey, I can take this thing off and crawl through their vent and get inside, nobody will ever know. So he proceeded to do so. He took the top off, got it open, put his feet down through the vent first, and started to ease himself down as he got so far in he lost his grip and slipped. And when he did, his arms went up over his head and he slid down the vent, which was centered over a cross beam. And when he landed, he straddled the wall with a foot going on each side of the wall. He had been there, rained on, with his hands in this position. When they cut him out, they took him out. On the way out, it was very obvious that a certain part of his anatomy had swollen up to grapefruit size. And being from Florida, we know our grapefruit here. So <laughs> obviously, he had done some damage to himself took the fire department to get him down. He had obviously served his sentence before we even got the call to come to the burglary. In Columbia, Tennessee, a man walked into a building and announced that this was a bank robbery. The only problem was that this was no longer a bank. Fortunately, the jail was still a jail. And now, actual footage of a case we call, please hold the evidence on that burglar. The San Antonio Police and Fire Department answered an unusual silent alarm at a convenience store. It seems they had a dumb criminal wedged in their kitchen vent with his sneakers on the grill. The dumb criminal came down the chimney just like Santa. But our dummy was a little too wide to squeeze out. Oh, I think that left sneakers about that. He must have been a dumb criminal combo meal because he did come with fries and a toy. The rescuers tried bringing him out the way he got in, but finally they had to dismantle the exhaust hood to get the dumb criminal out. He immediately sat on the warm grill, just warming his buns for a crime that was not well done. Next, Dusty Cutler shows us how patrolling the parking lot of a large shopping mall can be more bizarre than you think. I was sitting in a, a parking lot at a local mall doing some paperwork, just a regular report. And when I heard some people yelling, I looked to my left to see what it was and saw a woman running desperately through the parking lot. She was a very tall woman dressed in a nice outfit, a dress with high heels. Uh, there was two men chasing her, and they were yelling that she had robbed them. She had uh, robbed a store in one of our local malls. And as she was running, I went to call it in on the radio and said I was uh, going to be chasing a, a female through the parking lot at the mall and noticed that she had hiked up her dress and she had on a huge pair of women's underwear that were stuffed full of clothing. And as she ran, her panties were falling off of her because of the weight of the clothing. And I said, uh, headquarters, I'm chasing a female. And about that time, her underwear had fallen to her knees and I saw she was really a man, dressed as a woman. I started laughing. I couldn't radio it in because I was laughing so hard. She fell to the ground. Her panties tripped her. Um, she pulled them off. She had fell, fallen and hurt her, herself, her, his self, him, his privates. 
<laughs> As he got up, he kicked off his high heels and continued to run, and I turned to try and cut him off, and he actually hit the side of my car and went over the hood, and I was able to get out and uh, eventually handcuff him and then tell him what I had. <laughs> Here's Nashville, Tennessee police officer Buddy Tidwell to tell us about the thieves who decided to come back for more. And that's when things got heavy. Many years ago in a rural area, I was a rookie, and there was an unfortunate man who was robbed. He was robbed of his wallet and the contents. These men at gunpoint uh, had approached him and demanded his, his money and wallet, and they took it. But apparently they weren't happy with the amount of money they had gotten from the man. They looked in his wallet, and they found a number of receipts where the man had purchased a stereo and a TV and a VCR. And they found a card inside his wallet that said, in case of emergency, notify. And it had his wife's name, his address, and his phone number. Well, the robbers called the man at his house and told him, we didn't get enough money and we want you to take this TV and stereo and all this nice stuff you've bought. We want you to set it outside your house in a box and we want it out there by 9 o'clock p.m. or we're coming over and we're going to do you and your family in. Well, naturally, the man was terrified. So he called us and uh, we told him to sit tight and we sent a car right by to get the man and his family and take him to a place of safety. And my partner and I arrived there. So we went into the man's garage and looked around. We found a large cardboard box. And uh, there were some stones nearby. Large paving stones were nearby. And we took the stones and put them in the box. And we took a roll of duct tape we had in the car and we taped it. And we set it out as the robbers had described. And as we stepped back and looked, we thought, this will never work. These guys won't be this dumb. And uh, about 15 minutes uh, had elapsed. It was about five minutes after nine. We were ready to give it up, and uh, the bushes near the man's house started to rattle, and all of a sudden, three guys came out from behind the bushes, and they grabbed this huge box full of rocks. And we looked at each other and began to laugh, but we, as we approached them, we yelled police and stopped and put the box down. And nothing new, and they held on to the box for dear life. And they continued to run with a, this 200-pound box, and. As they, they went farther, they got exhausted, and they finally just collapsed with the box. And when my partner and I got there, we easily took them into custody and uh, showed them what was inside the box. Oh, man, that ain't no VCR! He lied to me. I told oh, him, man, man, what did you just shoot him? You stupid, you stupid, shut up! You shut up! Just get shut up! I guess you could definitely say these guys were dumber than a box of rocks. <laughs> these three were definitely candidates for the Witless Protection Program. In Kansas, it used to be against the law to drive into the city without first walking ahead to warn people. But then if you'd ever seen the drivers in Kansas, you'd understand why. You know, we couldn't have done this show without the cooperation of the men and women of law enforcement across America. We'd like to thank them for their time, their dedication, and for making our lives a lot safer. And we learned that cops are just people too, with one exception. They're willing to lay down their lives for us.